big mountains up here and do some scout and start hunting some elk here in a couple days with the guys from the Born and Raised Outdoors crew. It's going to be just probably the coolest thing in the whole world. Yeah, yeah. What are those? Those have got to be cold. It is cold. 90 degrees yesterday where we were at, Ted. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's dropped to <laughs> things, changed, things changed a little bit out here for us. It's like 45 right now. It's just gonna get colder because we've got to go up another 3,000 feet or so tonight before we find camp. There they are, Ted. There's elk over there in those hills. You think you're gonna get sick? I might. I might get sick. It takes me a day or so to get acclimated to this. I'll be sick every day of the trip if that means I get to hunt elk. I'd do it anyway. Yeah, that's our unit right there, Ted. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. Good spot to glass for some elk <laughs> right now. We can't see nothing. But hey, here's a road. Said it was a moderately rugged unit. Looks to be that the case. I wonder if they just pulled that in or if that's been sitting there. And these are people that brought their campers in ahead of time. So. Got their spot picked out. Yep. Good spot for them to be. Might as well camp right here. Camp out here amongst them. Right out here amongst them. Hopefully, hear some bugling at night. That'd just be all right, wouldn't it? That'd be great. That'd be <laughs> ideal. Left 95 degree weather, and it's 35 degrees right up here right now. <laughs> it's chill. I still got my gym shorts on. <laughs> kind of spooky. There it is. Get that bear spray out at the ready. A little chilly. 33. 33. It is chilly and we're up where the air is thin. This is our first full day here in Wyoming. Tomorrow the archery season opens. Born and raised guys are coming today. Cody said he was going to be here probably this evening sometime, but Ted and I came a couple days early so that we could get some scouting in because we've never been to this unit before. We have no idea what we're dealing with. So came here to scout for a full day. Got up and it's probably 20 minutes before daylight right now. We're gonna cruise up this road to a high point and do some listening this morning. Some glassing. Well, there's a camp right there. As soon as I said that, yeah, there's a camp right there. We've already saw a dozen camps, maybe more. Let's go see if we can find some elk. You see him? Yeah. I was like, that color looks like it's an elk. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice six point bull, isn't it? Another bull to the right. They're all three young bulls. Yeah, they don't they don't care about this truck at all. No. That's a good sign right there. I'd like to roll this window down and let my foot off at these brakes. It's three young bulls. I was driving up this road and I looked out ahead of us and I just saw this like kind of, I don't know, that light brown patch out there. Looked like an elk's rump. And then I saw this big rack stick up out of the grass. <laughs> what? There's, there's 200 elk. <laughs> Holy freaking crap. Yeah, 
Not a real big bull. Not a real big one? Mm mm. What does he compare to that last one? A little smaller, small five point. Is he? I mean, how many elk are there right there? I don't know. <laughs> the whole hillside's right moving. Two hundred. There's got it. Oh, there's more than two hundred. More? Yeah. <laughs> and there's forty in the frame right now. Looks like a bunch of cows, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a bull. Yeah. There's a couple of bulls. There's one. There's one pretty nice bull right there. It's the biggest bull we've seen. Not bugling or anything. Just with the cows. Still a younger bull though. See, it's still early enough like the mature bulls. They're probably not with all these cows yet. I mean, these are bull. I would shoot these for sure. Got a nice six-point bull. I don't know if they're spooked or if they're just... It's moving or what? It's moving. Oh, there's a bull moose. Is there? Big bull moose. Behind him? Yeah. <laughs> there's actually a bunch of moose. Yeah, there's a freaking huge bull moose over here. That's exactly what had them moving around. Couple guys just sitting up there glassing. This is freaking nuts. There's like half a dozen moose down here, one big bull moose, and like probably 300 head elk. But how the heck do you hunt something like that? I don't know. <laughs> it's just a huge herd, huge herd elk. How's it going? Good, how you guys doing? Just screwing around. Yep, we're out, we're out looking for elk. We're from Iowa, I drew the tag. We just got here last night and just trying to drive around and learn the unit a little bit. Just talked to some fellas from Wyoming residents that are gonna be hunting in here in the unit. Sounds like they've hunted in here most of their life. Got some real good information from them. This particular unit that we're hunting in is kind of broken terrain. As you can see, there's like little pockets of dark timber and then these big wide open meadows with uh, little creeks running down through them. I mean, it's perfect habitat for elk and moose and deer for that matter because they're everywhere in here too. With these big herds like that, it's gonna make it difficult to get close enough to get a shot at them with a bow. In Wyoming, in this particular unit especially, there's also some wilderness area. And as non-residents, we're not allowed to go in there without a resident guide of some sort. So I was talking to those guys about going in the wilderness area. They said they they probably won't go up in there because there's plenty of elk down here. I got some crazy phone scope footage though. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Probably should have put it closer towards the tailgate. I'm too old for this. Big one, Morb. What? It's a big one. Okay. It's a freaking slob. Uh huh. I just like, let's just bugle into this big face right here off the side of this road. So I let one rip. I'm like staring way up the up the side of that face. And I just look right down here in the bottom, right below us, and he's standing down here. I wonder if he stood up when he heard it. I'm assuming they did, probably. I mean, he's not spooked or anything. He's just standing there. Yeah, that's a that's a mature bull there. Dude. He went down in this weather. Look, he's moving. Yeah, I'm oh no, he's pawing the dirt. He's pissed off. Bugle bull. He's bugled, I think. You sure? It looked like it from his mouth. You sure, he's not yawning. Might have been yawning. You'd hear him be bugled real loud from here. What do you think? I don't think anybody even knows that that elk is down there. I mean, if you were just driving by right now, he's feeding behind that bush and nobody will ever see him. I'm almost, I'm almost positive he was bedded down before I bugled. These mature animals, regardless of whether it's an elk or a deer, they all end up in the same stupid spots like this. We've driven through this entire unit today. 
we've went probably 120 miles today in the truck just driving back roads glassing looking for hunting pressure looking for elk sign so we did like we do with turkeys you know we stop and like to call into a big face like this where that sound can echo and project up through there a ways and we didn't get him to respond but we saw him it's like five miles through there to get to him yeah seemed like a good start seemed like a real good start i think we can just put contractor bags on each leg and we can cross the river right here it's tricky to get back up in there where they're at. I mean, we've either got to go way down the ridge, like six miles, and then walk through all that blow down to get there, or we can cross this creek right here and go straight up. And that little bench trail is right up there. Right here is where I think we can cross up. See, we go, if we go right, over, right across through there with the contractor bags, I think we'll be good. Don't you think that'll work? Yeah, try to be real slick. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be real swift. I'm, we can keep going up and try to find a different place where we can maybe bounce across the rock. It's going to be kind of swift. Yeah, have to get a stick probably. Or we got trekking poles, that'll work. Look at the rig these guys got. It's like already tacked up. And... What's up, man? Oh. Thank you guys Loading. for coming. Yeah, Aaron, Dad, how's it going, man? You. Good, dude. Ted? Nice to meet you. Oh, We're so yeah. freaking stoked, dude. Really? We saw a mammoth tonight. You serious? Yeah. Well, I mean, he's he is to us. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to measure elk or anything, but he's a huge bull. Really? Yeah. I mean, he's... Is he in a tucked away place or? Yeah. Really? Mm hmm Sweet. Cheers to new friends, new adventures. Amen. Let's get wild, boys. <laughs> I can blow an elk call all right at my house when nobody's watching, but when I get out in the woods, ye, I got things can get yeah. things can get pretty hairy pretty fast. <laughs> Prototype tube. Oh, nice. Cool. I brought spray paint so we can do them up right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Those were hot off the press overnighted to me in Arizona. It's like Christmas. Yeah, man. It is. <laughs> We got that, our new cow call. Oh, dope. I gotta, we gotta do a little work on the reed, but there you go, Ted. I been waiting all year for this. I've actually been waiting like four years for this because elk hunting is just the coolest thing ever for me. What do you think, Ted? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty great. Ted's pretty excited, as you can tell. We're getting our packs ready to go. We roosted some bulls tonight, so we're in good shape. Tomorrow's opening day gonna get after them weather's supposed to be perfect so we're gonna get some shut eye then get up in the morning and go after those bulls that we found this this evening should be good <coughs> like, here now give me a hand here no no I haven't I've just seen guys do it. I'm coming up because they're not naked and just go for it. That's not that hey, I you, you know, that's how I may end up after this uh, first little soiree down here. I must have tore them on the bottom or something. Already. You're getting wet? Yeah, they're already wet. Ah, there's a hole right there. Yep, first day, let's just pull out all the stops. Going after the road bull this morning, opening day here in Wyoming. Had a little bit of a time crossing the creek, but we made it. No worse for the wear other than cold feet. We can't hear nothing down here next to this thing though, so we're gonna hike up to this first bench. This is a big timber cut, and this is where all these elk have been that we've 
been scouting the last, I guess, last couple days here. So we're gonna hike up and kind of quarter up the hill and get up on that saddle and then head to, down to where we marked those bulls yesterday. It's a lot more open than I thought it was gonna be though in this, this unit. Do you all hear that? Uh -huh. Let's go up that bench. I'm gonna just heard something. Ford supersonic hearing. Yeah, not like yours. Did you hear anything today? Yeah. I think he just says that sometimes to keep us moving. The break time's done, right? straight down below. Could we hear one bugle from there? Yeah, it depends on what the wind's doing. What do you think, Ted? Probably gonna get this thing. That'd be great. It's just pretty much the greatest thing ever. You just go balls deep out of the gate. Yeah. Just go for it. Why not? I like your style. Why not? We slipped up here and spotted some of these elk. I don't know if it's the same bulls that Ted and I saw from the road last night or not, but pretty good chance it is. What is there, four or five elk in there, probably? I think so. Two nice bulls. They're probably a thousand yards or so. The wind is not good right now. It's blowing kind of at our back, so we're just trying to be patient and wait for the sun to warm this hillside up. Three bulls? Yeah, it's like a rag five. There's three bulls over there now. The wind is not good, so we're gonna have to be real patient with these things and wait until it either switches in our favor or we may have to try to go up and around them or down and under them and hook all the way around them before we can make a play. The good thing is, is they don't seem like they're moving very far. They're content on being on that hillside right there. So as long as we're patient and we work in there, we can probably get in a pretty good setup. That's big gray. That's big awesome. oh, enough. Oh, there's another bull coming down right at him. Jeez, have you seen that one? Uh, I don't know. Is that the gray bull? That's the bull we saw last night. Yeah, that's the yeah, gray. That's the gray one. All three of them shooters. Look. Yeah. <laughs> He's the biggest one. Yep. And the one at the left is pretty, pretty nice too. Hopefully they all go below. That's what I. That's gonna be the only issue is if one of them stays up high. Oh yeah, there's that bull above. Oh wait, that's a different one. That's a different one. Jeez, he's a shooter. Jeez. <laughs> there was at least four or five of them that went kind of a, they wrapped kind of around the tip of that ridge, which is pretty much a perfect scenario for us because now they're out of sight and we can move pretty quick to get over there. We got a bull's nest over there. You can send a single bell right through it. Where's your bed, Ted? Right there. Right there. Perfect. How does it feel for the little fresh mountain water? Pretty good. It's, simple. it's fresh, look at it. Bull piss in the water up there. Two I days ago. I don't taste any piss. You right know what now. piss tastes like? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it's nice and clear. Yeah. So I like those because you can grab dirty water. If that bull was screaming we need to go, you could cross the creek. You literally, in less than a minute, grab the water you need to go, throw it in your pack, keep going. You don't have to, you know, no, no moving parts. You guys need to comment below. Scale of one to 10. You think Ward's excitement level, like if this was a gobbler, would he be like, 
Yeah, we got a gobbler over there on the six. We're gonna go over there and kill it. You know, when he gets jacked up in the last minute. Or is this like a 180 Missouri buck? Like, what's the comparison there? Where's his excitement level at? I think it's way above all the... Oh, oh, it just took off. They're sneaking up to this bench and we just busted a bull out of his bed. I thought they had all moved over, but apparently there was one left. I mean, we, we, we have to get to that point anyway. Last time we saw them, they were that right there going over. We hiked all the way out of there, did not have any luck getting those bulls to fire off, so. Got a couple hours left of shooting light. We're gonna see if we can glass them up down here in this broken timber where we saw them at last night. We were right up in there, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of right on the top of that. I think that's our boys. There's the other one. That's a big one. Where? Up top. Yeah, the one down below him is even better. Unless he's up there now. Look at hey. that one up top there, see? right there. Sure. Okay, see that? Oh my gosh. Look at that yeah, that's the one I got there. there. Just underneath it. He might have just oh. bugled right there. You? No. They bugle? I thought they did. They're way in there. Mm-hmm. I thought, yeah, we'd just jump in from the bottom and be right there, but it's... I think they may be completely different out than the ones we were on this morning. I think you pretty much got the same scenario here that you did up there. Just gotta have to get wet. Yep. Must be the the secret sauce, Ted. You got have cows around. Yep. Then they bugle. That's what we've been waiting for all day. <laughs> Too bad there's like 50 to 100 cows. He's coming. Look at your bull. Yeah. Look at him. They stopped in the road up there. Are they crossing the road, Cody? No. Oh. Is that a big bull? Sounds like a big bull. Sounds like a big bull to me. It's hot, you gotta buzz your lips. It's Just got back to camp, end of day one. Got on a lot of elk today, saw like 10, 11 different bulls, it was pretty crazy, but they weren't talking at all. The one thing we noticed with that whole face that we were hunting all the way down through there, where it was like five, six miles of timber cut, is that we didn't see a cow. And those bulls just weren't bugling, they weren't responding to anything. So we were just having to glass them, spot them, and then try to stalk them. Got back up here towards camp, pulled into the road that we're camped on and there's all these other people on this road and got out to just uh, road bugle and there was a bunch of bulls and a bunch of cows down in this bottom and we can hear them from here so only problem is I think everybody else camped on this road can hear them too so that will give us an interesting dilemma in the morning do we go after the bulls that are quiet or do we go after these bulls that are talking with all these cows next to all these hunters I don't know 
We're gonna go to bed and wake up and find out.